We are live. I'm so excited today to be bringing you, bringing to you again, episode four of my new IG live show where I interview top athletes and celebrities. So today I'm really excited to be um, hosting Marianne Alder, Alda, and Marianne has, is, has done quite a bit. And so it's going to be exciting to have her today and interview her. Hello, Courage Giver. Good to see you, my friend. And um, so she has done so much and currently is working on or just finished up a movie as well. So I will be talking to her about all of that. And so as soon as Marianne joins us, we will bring her up. I'll bring her up and we'll get started. And just excited to be able to interview her. This show has been a blessing. This is episode four of the IG Live show. And it's just every week there are gems being dropped by my, my guests. And it's just been an absolute blessing. So I'm excited to have her here today to talk about her life on TV in, you know, as a stand up comedian and all of that. So we're going to talk about that today. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, because towards the end, we are going to, um, I'm going to entertain questions for her. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the question box and I will bring them up so that she can answer at the end of the interview. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you, whether you're watching it right now or whether you're watching it during the replay, I appreciate you. Go ahead and leave your comments as well during the, during the replay. So as we get ready, how is it? Tell me where you are watching from. Tell me where you are watching from. Yeah. All right. So tell me where you're watching from and um, we'll get started as soon as Marianne joins. And there she is. So let's bring her up. Hello. Hi there. Brittany. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, to I told you I was going to give you a peek inside my um, my my space. Uh -huh. I know where I work out. So can you see this? It says it starts here. It says. Is this really, is this backwards? It it's says, it's, never it's give backwards up. because it's that selfie mode. So oh. okay, never, exactly. never it's give up now. like that. Well, okay. So it's never, what the heck? Oh, wait a second. Wait a minute. Never give up. Okay. Can you see it? Never, never give up. No, because it's the other, it's on the other side. Oh, it's, oh, it's this way. Yeah. Never give up. So never yeah. give up. Yeah. Never Woo. give up. Yes. Okay, so we're going to enter the room now. Yes. Never give up. And right here it says, keep your eyes on the prize. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to come in. <clears throat> and this is my workout den everything room. Okay. So you can okay. kind of see I... Put some little decals up there so it feels like fun and i'm going to take you over here it says the best time to for new beginnings is now yes love that yes. love laugh i mean live laugh and love i have inspiration all over you know? yes i so love it all over the walls and in front of the television you will notice I have here my stationary bike. So I will watch Perfect. TV and, and then I have my trampoline. I make sure that everything is close. <laughs> and then here yeah. is my, I will sit here and sometimes, you know, meditate. 
I've got a bunch of pillows over here. There's my yoga mat. There's my you know, back thing. There's my Pilates. I mean, I have everything here. And because I use this as my audition space, I put a drop and a um, curtain rod so when I have the auditions, I just pull that and I have the blue screen behind me. Yes, yes, okay. that's smart. And then I make sure, okay, there's the couch. You see the couch. Mm -hmm. Okay, but everything is right. And I have a lot of books. I have a lot of books and stuff here. But I keep my weights and my water. Okay. And yes. everything, I've got my, you know, my Pilates thing here. And I keep everything that's close at hand. So that's my secret, to keep everything close at hand. I yes. have my little meditation bowl. I have stuff. OK, so now I'm going to turn it back around. I'm going to put the, um, you know, and then so this, is, so this is my view. I will sit here and I will be on the bike or I will, you know, pick up some weights. I keep my weights here. And the thing, the secret to, I'm going to turn it back around now. OK. And then put it in here. Do, 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 do. Okay, I turned it around. How do I turn it back? Just I, it's it's got an arrows going around. So yeah, I see. Okay, but it's oh there it it's is. It's got the two okay. arrows right okay, curved. There, 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 there we go. Excellent. Okay, so now it's back to me. I'm gonna turn this on so you can see me. Okay. Okay. There we go. How's that? Ooh, that's a little bright for me. Um, I don't see you yet, but... Oh, have I turned it, not turned it around? I don't... There yeah, I there we are. There you are. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, awesome. Hello, hello. So let me take the... Marianne just gave us a tour of her space. And it's very practical, very her, and... Um, I love it. I love that. Yeah, that's and how I so, that's, see these. I, I'm getting, I'm, you know, you got to get, keep your guns up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> absolutely. You so the hall. Okay. when the is sun's out, light? guns are out. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Love it. So let me go ahead and introduce you. And then we can get, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So let me go ahead and introduce you, and okay. then um, we can get started with the questions. I am excited to have you here today because um, you're just a powerhouse. You know, you're a powerhouse on Clubhouse, and, and you were years before even Clubhouse. So I, I want to take the time to introduce you properly and then go into the questions. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay, and if anyone has questions, Go ahead and put them in the question box, and I'll pull it up at the end of the interview so that Marianne can answer. Okay. All right, so Marianne Alder, one of the first African-American daytime soap opera heroines as criminal attorney Dee Dee Bannister on ABC's Edge of Night. Today, Marianne is prosecuting ageism with her TEDx talk, Ageism is a bully, stand up to it. Her solo show, Getting Old is a Bitch, but I'm going to wrestle that bitch to the ground. And <laughs> as an AARP age disruptor, additional TV career highlights include starring opposite Red Fox and Della Reese as their daughter, Elizabeth, on CBS The Royal Family, recurring as Lita. I'll be waiting in the Beamer, Ford, Anthony's yuppie from hell girlfriend on CBS Designing Women, and co-starring opposite O.J. Simpson as his wife, Ellen, for three seasons on HBO's First and Ten. As a stand-up comic, she's played The Laugh Factory Chicago, The Second City, The Hollywood Improv and Gotham Comedy Club, and Caroline's in New York City, among others. Currently, she can be found every Tuesday night hosting Aging Shamelessly Conversations on the audio app, 
Clubhouse. Welcome, Mary Ann. Hi, which is where we met. We met on Clubhouse. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I'm so glad to have met you. So I want to ask you a few questions and feel free to put some extras in there if you want. Okay. So, I've been watching your videos too. I've been oh. doing my leg lifts. I've been doing, <laughs> I've been, I've been doing my scissor leg lifts. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Yes. We're, we're aging shamelessly. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so the first, my first question is, I love your mantra of aging shamelessly. So please give us a background as to what led you to your profession and what catapulted you to being an age disruptor. Okay. Well, um, my profession as an actress, yes. I, I, when I was a little girl, my favorite show was the Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> and I remember seeing, and I was born in 1948. There were not that many black people on television in the 50s. But uh, Annette Funicello was Italian and she had darker skin and black curly hair. And, you know, as a kid, that was the closest thing that I saw that I felt looked like me. Because, you know, right. when you're a kid, you, did, you just don't, you don't know race. You just know color. And you go like, well, we're kind of, you know. Right. So uh, I learned all the Mickey Mouse Club songs. You know, today is Tuesday. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're going to have a special guest. I mean, I, I still remember these songs. <laughs> That's awesome. So, um, and when I do motivational speaking, especially to young uh, high school students, I always tell them, that the secret to dreaming a big dream, to aim for the stars, is that even if you don't make it, you'll still make it to the moon. But if you dream a little dream, just to get up on the cur off the curb, you don't make that, you're gonna end up in the gutter. So aim high. And I always say that I aimed for the stars, I wanted to be on the Mickey Mouse Club. I never got to be on the Mickey Mouse Club. But ironically, it's 3.30 time slot was right before, it's 4 o'clock time slot was right after the 3.30 time slot of Edge of Night. So I didn't make it to the Mickey Mouse Club, but I made it to the Edge of Night. And yes. second best isn't half bad. So I, I say that. So I, I always wanted to be uh, an actor. I think I tried to uh, talk myself out of it because no one in my family is in show business. But when I, uh, when I was in college, I discovered Carl Jung, uh, the psychologist, and he says that we are genetically predisposed by the gifts, our innate gifts and talents. And I looked at my mom and I looked at my dad. They weren't in show business, but they had the type of person. I mean, genetically, I got a lot of stuff from them right. that would, you know, propel me into this as a career. And, uh, and maybe if the opportunities had been different for them when they were growing up, they might have pursued it as well. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. So um, I, I did theater in high school and in college. And when I moved to New York, actually, I had a double major theater and journalism. And the journalism was supposed to be my fallback career. But I was still a little nervous about it because nobody was encouraging me to be an actor. It was like, oh, that's a pipe dream. You know, you take dance classes and you do that stuff, you know, for culture and to give me poise, but to that, that career, not really. So um, I kind of kept that to myself. And I was an account executive at Burson Marsteller Public Relations in New York. And then I was a unit publicist for ABC Daytime in New York. And then I, I, I got pregnant. I went out on maternity leave. When I was out on maternity leave, I auditioned for a theater company that had a contract with the Parks Department of New York City. I auditioned and I got it. And I was making 75 bucks a week and all we could beg in the street. And I thought, okay, I had my first audition and it was a paying gig as an actor. I'm not going back. And I do believe that uh, becoming a parent, having to be responsible for another human being and what I would want for him, uh, allowed me, gave me permission 
to give those things, same things to myself. It's like, so maybe I am crazy, but this is what I, this is what I love to do and I'm going to go for it. And it worked out. Yes. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So oh, wait, here's, an, here's an interesting little, little tidbit I want to share too. Uh -huh. Seven years later, after I left ABC, I was starring on Edge of Night, which was an ABC show. Mm -hmm. When I was, was, went under contract, the woman who had my old job had been my former colleague at ABC. And she had to write my bio. And she said, well, you're good at this. You want to write your own bio? I said, no, Audrey. But I know what questions you should ask me. So after <laughs> she wrote my bio, she looked at it and she said, wow, you've really done something with your life. And that touched my heart. Because what she was saying was that in those seven years, she didn't feel that she was doing anything with hers. Mm. And I do believe you might, you know, like I said, you can aim for the stars and you might not make it. You might make it to the moon. You might have some disappointments if, you know, as you pursue your dream. But disappointment is a lot easier to live with than regret. Yes. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yes. Absolutely. At least you tried. You know, if, if you fail, at least you tried. And I love right. that. And then you pick yourself up and you keep going. And, yes. and I believe that failure is something, simply something that you have to go through to get to where you want to go. Everybody yes. fails at something. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So now talk to me about how that background has catapulted you to being this age disruptor. Um, I don't think it catapulted me exactly. Um, I think I kind of stumbled into it. Okay. Um, when I made a great living for about 30, 35 years, mostly on television. When I hit like my early 50s, the casting director stopped calling me. Mm. Um, and I do believe that a lot of my career was um, a lot of my career was uh, as an appendage to a man. You know, mm. I was the wife, I was yes. the girlfriend, you yes. know. Uh, I was a leading lady. And, but I, my agent suggested that I gain 50 pounds so that I could do more character work. And I thought, that's <laughs> about the stupidest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> it's not healthy. Not healthy at all. <laughs> you know. And I said, no, but I do believe that that's what, you know, Hollywood's, well, she's not, basically what, ho the message that I got was, well, she's old now, so she's not pretty anymore, so she, we can't hire her. So I became a hypnotherapist because I think actors have a natural curiosity about human behavior and motivation. And I spent a year in training at the Hypnosis Motivation Institute in Tarzana, California. Honors graduate, by the way. <laughs> Yay. And when I started seeing clients, most of my clients were women in their late 30s, late 40s, 50s, late 30s to early 50s. And if you know anything about California, the Tarzana, Encino, that, that neighborhood is pretty ritzy. Um, so these were women who had status for the most part and money, but they were depressed. Mm. And I soon came to realize that my job was not to hypnotize them. It was to de-hypnotize them because we are all under this trance by society and the media that women lose value and social and sexual currency as we get older. So true. And the funny thing is that as I would give them the positive suggestions, actors are, are highly um, impressionable and susceptible to, um, to a lot of stuff really. But anyway, <laughs> it dropped into my own subconscious mind and I, I thought, I have to live my dream. I can't, you know, let Hollywood uh, 
make a decision for me. And right. so I decided that I would go back to my first, my first love, which was live performing, because I started out doing theater and sketch comedy. And so my very first solo show, I did at the auditorium at the Hypnosis Motivation Institute, and it was called Snap Out of It, You've Only Been Hypnotized Into Believing You're Over the Hill. <laughs> and from there, I progressed. I started doing sketch comedy with a group called Three Black Chicks. It was myself, Lola Love, and Iona Morris. And we had this show called Herotica about uh, the mature woman's sexual fantasies and fulfillment. And then um, Lola went on to do other things and uh, Iona and I continued to work together and we did a show called MOIST, which is an acronym for the Multiple Orgasm Initiative for Sexual Transformation. And Iona decided that she wanted to uh, actually pursue her career as a director. And so it was like, I was left saying, well, I still want to go forward. So I started, I went back to doing a, my solo, a solo show. The first solo show was Occupy Your Vagina. It's a metaphor or not. <laughs> uh, and my, my current solo show is Getting Old as a Bitch, but I'm going to wrestle that bitch to the ground. And it broke a 30-year box office record at the National Black Theater Festival in uh, 27, 2019. I'm sorry, 2019. Wow. And that's because women are starving, starving to see themselves being represented the way they see themselves, yes. especially women of color. Yes. You know, it's like, you know, you're 50, what, 56? I'm 50, 57 now. Mm -hmm. 57. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're 57. I'm 73. Why aren't we seeing vibrant and vital representations of women like us on television? Yes. So um, I'm working on it. I, through a clubhouse, I met some fabulous people. I want to give a shout out to my girl, Tamika, to Gino, to Dre, to Donna Marie, and <laughs> Elle, and Anjua, and Brenda, and who else? Cheryl, and fabulous people who are part of the new Hollywood. And if I first left any name out, I'm sure. Oh, Shamika. Okay, sorry. Uh, if I left anybody else's name out, please forgive me. Um, but I would go into the new Hollywood rooms and I would preach the same gospel. According to a 2017 Federal Reserve survey on consumer finances, women over the age of 50 owns 75% of the wealth in this country. Yes. So if you do not include a nuanced, layered, non-stereotypical, mature woman in your scripts, you're leaving money on the table. Yes. And Gino Brooks heard me. He has a production company, Artistic, The Artistic Standard, and he has a program called Bear the Torch Shorts. He has a series of eight short films that will be coming out in January of this of 2022 on the all black AMC's all black uh, streaming uh, network. And um, and if I got any of that wrong, Gino, and you're listening, please correct it in the comments. But he heard me, and six months later, I got this DM saying, "I'm trying to find you. I got something for you." I'm based in Chicago right now. I flew out to LA and I did this wonderful short written by this fabulous young um, writer director, Jess Walters, and it's called Gumbo. So be looking for it. I'll be letting you know. It's yes. called Gumbo. And I play a, a renowned chef and food truck owner. And this young woman tries to steal my recipe. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, and. What was interesting was when um, Jess wrote it, Jess is a young black woman. She identifies as um, queer, non-binary, uses the pronouns they. And she said, as a marginalized queer black woman, she can appreciate the need for greater representation. And 
I said to her, well, you know, honey, I'm an old black woman and I have an appreciation for greater representation too. So we had a nice conversation about that because initially like she had the character in a muumu and she was 60 and I said, well, can she be 73 and can, instead of a muumu, can she be in yoga pants, a tank top and a kimono? She said, yes, <laughs> I am. So she was open to that. And we had many, you know, conversations about the fact that even marginalized groups can still um, don't recognize that they are marginalizing other groups. Uh, mm. And the funny thing about it is that when it comes to age ageism, you know, age is the common denominator of every group. Yes. You can't change your color. You can't change your ethnicity. You can't, you know, but you, but you are, everybody's going to get old. Yes. Everybody. Yes. You're not going to stay young forever. You will change your age. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I love that. I love that. So, yes. And so thank you. Thank you for that and, and for sharing gumbo. So we'll be looking for that. And where is it coming? Where is it going to be? Um, it, it's going to be streaming on, um, it's an AMC, one of AMC's channels, and it's called the it all black, all BLK streaming channel. Okay. I, 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 okay. And it's going to be, the, I don't know where it is, but I'll let you know. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll follow, follow Marianne and you'll know when that comes out because she'll have it posted and we'll definitely highlight it as well. Yeah. Okay. So my next question is, I see you're someone who takes care of herself physically. Please share what you do for a workout or workouts and why you chose that. Okay. Um, I used to be a gym rat. I, I, I love going to the gym and working out and I love the energy of other people. Well, of course the pandemic happened. I just, I say, um, talking to my YouTube aerobics. <laughs> up on the screen I'll yes. pick one and I'll do that it depends on like some of them are an hour if I feel like doing an hour I'll do an hour right. I do the walking uh, aerobics sometimes just walking right. um, sometimes I'll do stretching aerobics sometimes I'll do ab aerobics whatever moves me that day but I make sure that I get at least one uh, a tw 20 minute workout of you know of a and then I'll do the bike. And then sometimes I'll watch television and I'll just jump on my trampoline. Yeah. And, and yes. so I make sure that I get an, at least an hour in um, yes. at least five days a week. I try okay. to do seven days a week, but at least five days a week. Yes. Then I love that answer. And the reason why I love that answer is that you found a way to work out at home. And for a lot of people, gym is not an option. Even if they can afford it, some people are intimidated by going to the gym. And so for you to say, I just work out, this is what I do. I choose different YouTube videos and I do them. Awesome. That is inspirational to anybody listening that you don't have an excuse. You can go ahead and find something that you can do online and just keep moving. So thank you for that answer. Okay, my next question is, and I want to make sure we don't get cut off at the at the hour. So, my next question is: weight loss and main, weight loss and maintaining a healthy body comes from mainly what we eat. Would you share your meal choices and what you avoid? I would say everything in moderation. You know, I. I try not to deprive myself of anything because when you do, then you crave it and then you just yes. go nuts. Yes. So um, I might have ice cream every couple of months. If I get a craving for ice cream, mm -hmm. I'll have the ice cream and then I won't want it again for another couple of months. You know, I, I eat a lot of salads. I eat a lot of fruit. Um, a typical breakfast for me, I'll tell you what I had yesterday for breakfast and I'll tell you what I had today. Yesterday, I took a half an avocado, I mashed it up and on a, a slice of rye toast, 
spread that on there. I discovered something. I took a, like a handful of, a cupful of spinach and I put it in the microwave for, for uh, 40 seconds. So it kind of got, you know, cause a whole bunch of spinach, mm -hmm. you can't, it won't, it falls off the sandwich. Right. But when you microwave it, it's, it has just enough texture that you can just smash it into the avocado and it will cling. <laughs> right. And then on top of that, I put a little dollop of um, spicy hummus and spread that around. And then I topped it with um, uh, tomato slices. And that was my breakfast. Delicious. That carried me through most of the day. Yes. And then uh, today I had oatmeal with a banana chopped up. And then I had a scoop of uh, crunchy peanut butter. And so, and that carried me, you know, through most of the day. Yeah. So basically I eat two meals a day, you know, it's, I, and I, and I um, do intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. So I probably will have my first meal at like 10 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and I'll have my last one at like six o'clock. Okay. You know, six or seven. And then I, I won't eat anything, you know, after that. Right. Excellent. No, I love it. Your choices and are high. And I drink a lot of water. Yes, yes. I, I make sure that I drink at least two of these a day. So that's uh, that's 64 ounces in total. So that's eight, eight ounce glasses of water. I make yes. sure I drink lots of water. Absolutely. And, and those are the points you've hit on in that the foods you were describing are high in the good fat. They're high in fiber. And, and then you topped it off with, yes, I drink, I stay hydrated. I drink a lot of water. So I love that. I love that answer. All right, my next question is, what tips would you give to anyone listening who desires to start making healthy choices and work out? Baby steps. You yes. know, we, we, be, we become, we defeat ourselves. We think, oh, we're going to do it. We're going to say, no, 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 no. Because you'll get exhausted, you'll get worn out, and then you won't want to do it anymore. Right. Do a little bit at a time, just a little bit. If you can only do five or 10 minutes, do five or 10 minutes. Right. And build up to 20 minutes and be kind to yourself. Yes. Um, I think sometimes we, we think if we're not doing it right or if we're not doing then we don't do it at all. Right. Half ass is better than no ass. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Right. But, you know, it's you just you just got to start start where you're at and yes. and be kind to yourself. Um, reward yourself if you if you you know drank a lot of water, um, uh, and and you did and you did something you lost one pound whatever. Reward yourself with something, you know, and something simple like buy yourself a lipstick or something or, you know, just be kind to yourself. Right. Be good to yourself. I don't think we are as good to ourselves as we should be. Yes. And if anything, I think the pandemic taught us a lot about self-care. Yes. Um, you know, you saw when I came in here, I have positive inspirational things all over you know it just is a reminder especially women we tend to be nurturers and taking care of other people and we put ourselves last yes somehow thinking it's it's selfish to put ourselves first and that's ridiculous you right know, we cannot give from an empty cup right so fill fill up your cup physically emotionally and spiritually and then you have more to give others Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. So those of you that are joining us, I'm interviewing Marianne Alder. If you remember her, she was on the edge of night for years as attorney Dee Dee Bannister. She's been on designing women. And so um, we're talking about life in general and fitness and how she is staying fit at her age at 72, right? 73. 73. 73. And, let me a give half. You that. And, and a half. Let me give her those years. 
So if you're joining us, that's what it is. That's, um, we're spending time with Marianne. Go ahead and leave your questions in the uh, question box. So after the interview, she'll answer your questions. So my next question, Marianne, is um, as an actress, how do you balance healthy eating when on location? You stay away from the craft services table. <laughs> you don't go anywhere near those M&Ms. Um, you grab a piece of fruit and you take it back to your trailer or your dressing room. And you make sure that you have something there that if you need to snack on, they, they will always have healthy snacks. They're gonna have to, they're gonna have a lot of crap there too, but they will have healthy snacks. Grab an apple, <clears throat> you know, or, you know, and, or keep, or keep some almonds or something in your bag. Always have a little something yes. so that if you feel the need to uh, replenish, it's right there and make it easy for you. So you just have to, and, you know, and the thing about it is that once you start cutting sugar out of your diet, you don't crave it anymore. Right. <clears throat> right. Absolutely. You don't. And you start craving the, the healthier foods the foods that are naturally sweet, the, the fruits instead of the processed sugars and added sugars. So absolutely, right. that's, that's, that's awesome, I love that. Okay, my next question is, please discuss whether goal setting should be part of weight loss. What would you say are the pros and cons of goal setting as it pertains to weight or life in general? Uh, hmm. I, I think it's always nice to have an ideal that you're shooting for. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to have a goal, but it shouldn't be unrealistic. And I think you should celebrate every win, no matter how small. Yes. So it's just not, it's, if you're only focusing on the destination, then you're going to miss the journey. And you're going to miss the everyday joys of the journey. So, um, you know, I always say <clears throat> that if I never worked again as an actress, I have a great body of work, you know, that I can be proud of. But I love what it is that I do. And I have every expectation that I will have yet another series on television playing a woman of my age. Uh, and with my, with my joie de vivre, because I do think that having a zest for life is important. Yes. And I do think that's important. I, you know, it's funny. At this age, I consider acting my ministry um, because it's important. The message is as important as the entertainment. And a little bit of sugar helps the medicine go down. So I, this is why I do a lot of comedy because you can wrap hard truths in, in comedy. So uh, yeah, I want to do, I don't want to just work as an actor. I want to do important work as an actor. And that could be comedy or drama, but yes. something that's meaningful that's going to affect people and change their lives. Yes. So, you know, the, and in the meantime, I, you know, I do that in my stand up. I do that with my solo show. I've created things for myself that if nobody else hired me, I can hire myself. <laughs> yes. Yes. Wonderful. I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I love that you said that it should be smart goals. And then earlier you said, celebrate, celebrate yourself, you know, reward yourself. And so, Yes, just take the little steps and then just celebrate what you do. So thank you for those wise words. My next question is, as an age disruptor, what are some actionable steps we can all take against ageism? If you see a, um, something that's disturbing uh, on film and television, like the way there's a certain portrayal, let the, let the network know. Let the advertisers know. Uh, don't put up with it if you don't like it. Let people know. Be, lo be loud and proud. Be vocal. Um, and believe me, I practice what I preach. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and 
do that because when you take an actionable step, it's going to change how you feel because you've done something um, that's been proactive. So even if you don't see an immediate change in film or television or whatever the, 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 the product is, it's, it's important. And I think as we get older, you know, there are a lot of baby boomers who did not prepare well for retirement and they're working longer. And, and a lot of baby boomers are, you know, below the poverty level. I think it's important for us to get involved and get active politically so that, um, seniors need better housing. You know, there's a lot of homelessness right now. I just think, just get involved. Get involved, stay active, stay curious, yes. and stay passionate about something. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Great advice. Great advice. So how do you stay as busy as you are and still find a way to work out? Uh... There's no either or, it's yes and. I'm right. going to do what I need to do and I'm going to work out because if I don't work out, I don't, it affects me. Uh, working out is part of my job, you know? So it's not like I have to make a choice whether I do it. I'm going to do it because that's part of the, that's part of the deal, you know? Yes, yes, absolutely. I love that. And I love that you say working out is part of your job because taking care of yourself is part of our jobs, you know, as we're aging. And we all know things can creep up if we're not working out, if we're not eating right. Before you know it, the blood pressure is going up, the cholesterol is going up, you know. And so absolutely. Thank you for that. Right. And so, vanity helps too. I'm really vain. <laughs> <laughs> I think vanity, all... I say vanity is your friend. I think we all are a little vain, you know, if, if I wasn't, if, if we weren't, I wouldn't show up on camera right now with some lipstick and some, you know, a little bit of makeup. I pulled my hair for you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Once again, we are talking with Marianne Alda, who has been on Designing Women, Edge of Night. She's been on First and Ten. And um, she's just a powerhouse. She's been an actress for years. And the 73 and a half year old is such an inspiration. So I wanted to interview her. So if you have any questions, put it in the question box. And afterwards, she can answer your questions. So my next question, Marianne, is how do you advise that healthy living be incorporated in our lives as we age? Uh you know, it should be incorporated in our lives from day one. It shouldn't, you, it shouldn't be uh, all of a sudden you get to an, a certain age and you go like, oh my God, no, 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 no. I think I, I have always been conscious of what I ate. I've always been conscious of making sure that I got enough rest. The thing about it is that as you get older, you make adjustments because certain things become more important. Um, you know, there are things that you can get away with when you're younger. You can see, you know, you can skip a couple nights sleep. You can burn the candle at both ends for a very limited length of time. But as you get older, um, I would say just if you haven't already been taking care of yourself, start. You're never too old to start. Yes. If you haven't been doing it, just start where you are and start incorporating good habits. You know, if it's just taking a walk every day. Like I said, there are YouTube walking videos. Yes. Put a walking video on and then just walk in place. You don't have right. to say, oh, I can't get out today. Just walk in place. Right. Um, a trampoline. Trampoline is great because it's good for the lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps to, you know, drain, you know, the the lymph nodes in your no. glands and stuff like that a trampoline mm -hmm. is really good 50 bucks you can get a good trampoline jumping up and down and then just just a little bit and then take deep breaths i became aware I, i'm a very shallow breather and sometimes i have to stop and remind myself to take deep breaths sometimes yes. just during the day if you just stop and take three deep breaths and then just you know 
sit with yourself for maybe five minutes and then just you know, do a body check in, make sure that, that you're relaxed and you're feeling good, and then go on about with the rest of your day. We should check yes. in with ourselves several times a day to make yes. sure that we're taking deep breaths and, you know, and just say like, how are you feeling right now, Marianne? How are you feeling about that? You know, are you, are we good? Are we get, and then, you know? Yes, absolutely. I am such a proponent of ta taking those deep diaphragmatic breaths so that you oxygenate your blood so it's so important because you're right as we as we're growing up when we're babies we're, we're taking those deep breaths but when we grow up we tighten up and we we resort to those shallow breaths and you're right we have to be cognizant of it and go whoa i haven't been breathing deeply let me take a few minutes and let me breathe in and oxygenate my blood so thank you i love that so share some projects that you have coming up. I know you've already talked about gumbo. Are there other ones that are coming up? Well, it's, uh -oh. um, it's pilot season. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's pilot season. It's going to be pilot season. We're right now in focusing on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, but it's, I am anticipating, it seems to me that older women are starting to trend more and more on social media. I know the Sex and the City crew is coming out with uh, a new series. And these women who are, were 30 when the first Sex and the City first started are now in their 50s. Right. And uh, there's a lot of women over 50 now who are in the media who are coming forward and taking a stand about letting their hair go gray and not doing the fillers and stuff like that and allowing themselves to age naturally and look natural on camera. So I do believe that whatever made me wrong over the last, you know, 20 years, I am just right right now. Uh, as a positive representation of older women and as particularly women of color. I, yes. I haven't, I've never stopped working. You know, people ask me, are you still acting? And I say, well, I, I didn't leave television. Television left me, but the theater was always welcoming. So, uh, but I think I'm ready to go back to TV. I just, I, I love the camaraderie. You know, I've been doing my solo show on stand up for a while. I did not become an actor to be a solo artist. I like the camaraderie of working with other people in, in a collaborative effort and ensemble. So I'm looking forward to being back on television again. So y'all look for me and I'll be there. Absolutely. I don't and know when, but I will. <laughs> yes. And there is a series waiting for you. So you just have to connect with it. And, and I Absolutely. believe it will come. So definitely. And then well, you know, my... something, something that, um, Harrison Ford said, I read in the LA Times article 30 years ago. He's, and this was when he was Indiana Jones and you know, it is in his heyday. He said, I have no illusions about the role I serve in this industry. He said, I am simply a cog that helps to turn the wheels of commerce. Hollywood has not um, created enough cogs older women to turn that particular wheel. So I have been honing myself and giving, able to give value as an actor with an audio, a certain audience following. And, you know, I stayed, I've stayed current and kept in touch with my, with my fan base. And um, if I can get, and I'm, I'm, and I'm funny, if I must say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, you are. You are. And I just want to no, take I, just this time to tell everyone, if you, you have never watched her TEDx, you should go take a look at it because it is funny, but very powerful. So make sure you take a, go listen, take a listen to her TEDx talk. It was awesome. All right, so my next question is, just take, this is at the end, so this is my last question. Take a few minutes and speak to us from your heart and um, as it pertains to 
just life's lessons. Just whatever you want to share with us from your heart. Well, I, I always come back to this. And I actually mentioned it in my TED Talk. And um, it was something that my father taught me as a little girl. And he said, and it was, he, you know, he grew up in the Jim Crow South. And he said to me, when I was like five or six, because you're, he said to me, because you're a little colored girl, you're going to have to work 10 times as hard as those other folks. But don't let anybody else's no stop your yes. And I, I took that to heart because he said it without any anger or bitterness. And I thought, well, I better get cracking because I got, I got stuff to do. But I realized that in my later years that I don't have to work 10 times as hard anymore. And sometimes it's, we get so caught up in that narrative of I've got to do this, I've got to do that. It's like working hard has always been easy for me. But in my later years, I have learned that it's more important to just do the work in front of me and then relax and allow. Mm. Always leave room for the miracle. I do my job. I let God do the rest. Excellent. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. My goodness, thank you so much. This has been awesome. I really have the time. It's, it has flown by. And um, I just didn't feel it at all. So I just want to encourage anyone in the audience, if you have a question that will um, you want Marianne to answer, go ahead and put it in the comments. And she will be more than happy to answer as we wrap up. Um, the Courage Giver says, relax and allow. She loves that. Leave room for the miracles. Yes, absolutely. As she was, as you were sharing that, I was like, that's great. Because I always take clips from the interviews. And I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> that is just perfect. So great. She says, great interview. Thank you. Thank you. So, it, oh my goodness. Thank you so much. So Make sure you watch the replay. I will repurpose this. There will be clips of this. Um, Marianne is a powerhouse. If you're on Clubhouse, go watch her. Go be in a room with her. Um, Aging watch her Shamelessly is my club age, on Clubhouse. Aging Shamelessly. And also, you want to uh, go listen to her TEDx talk. It is very inspiring, but also funny. And... Um, just oh, follow oh, her. I, forgot. I do have something coming up. Oh my God. I yes. forgot. Um, on December the 4th, I am doing, uh, I'm part of I'm entertainment for the uh, Silver Sirens Redefining Ageism. Um, it's going to be held in Australia. They'll be zooming nice. me in. So I will be a, be a part of that. So uh, check out Silver Sirens on Instagram. I think you can okay. get you know tickets there for the people to uh, to um, who want to watch it virtually. It's an all day uh, workshop seminar. Okay. And then on January the sixth of twenty twenty two, the TEDx people at TEDx Oak Park Women invited me back to be the the host MC for the twenty twenty two TEDx talk. Oh, nice. So I'll be hosting that. Nice. Wonderful. That is and awesome. those tickets go on sale tomorrow. So if you're in the Oak Park, Chicago, Midwest area, you know, check that out at TEDx Oak Park Women. And, um, and you don't have to be in Australia, but if you want to check out their, um, their uh, seminar workshop, their all-day workshop, um, go to... Um, Silver Sirens, Redesigning, Redesigning, just go to Silver Sirens on Instagram. It's okay. Faith and Google. Okay. 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 So everybody, you heard or, that. Or, or DM me and I'll give you the information. Yes. Yes. Go ahead and DM Marianne and uh, it's Silver Siren, Sirens and make sure that you check that out. And so... I'm, I have been, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. 
and just listening to you for sharing your space with us. I love it because everybody's going to be able to see that in the replay as well. And well, thank so, you for asking me. Thank you for oh, asking me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure because as I'm thinking about fitness, I really hone in on people that are aging like I am but are taking care of themselves. And I look at people like that and go, I want to interview that person because I want you to inspire other people that it's okay to be 73 and a half and look yes, a certain way. <laughs> you know, be able to work out, look good, eat right, make those choices. I love what you said about reward yourself. And you can cheat every once in a while. It doesn't have to be that rigid. Everything in moderation. And so I love that. And you're definitely the poster child for you know, the 70s and being vibrant and just living your best life. And so thank you for saying yes to coming and being interviewed. And this would definitely inspire others as they watch this on all, I'll have it on a lot of platforms. So it'll be on LinkedIn. There'll be a clip. Um, there'll be a, the complete video will be on YouTube and Instagram. And then I'll have clips on reels and stories and all that so well, that, and tiktok so yes so thank, thank, thank you. you for having me oh my pleasure my pleasure well we're going to end the the interview but thank you so much for joining if you're just coming in we just finished talking to marianne alda but you're you didn't miss out because the full video will be on instagram and youtube so that you can see it in its entirety. So thank you so much. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Bernice. Okay, you. bye. Bye. bye.